Hey everyone, just thought I'd do a video of my FFR Parenti, how I've got it set up for traveling and camping, both for overnight camping and for a couple of days. So this is one option for sleeping, just sleeping in the back with a mattress. This is a mattress out of a big Daddy Deluxe swag. The reason I've got a spare mattress is because the first swag that I got had holes in it. So when I sent that back, they said that I could keep uh, everything else. So that's why I've got this here. It's almost a perfect size. It buckles up a little bit at the front, but that doesn't matter too much. Um, in the end, it gives a pretty good comfortable sleep. There's still enough room, there's about uh, two foot there, which for me is still fine to get up in and have a little bit of headroom so it's not too tight. So this is the camp kitchen uh, drawer. I've got a couple different ways that I can set it up. If I'm just going for uh, the day or while I'm traveling, I've always got this um, stand. So I leave this stand just in the back of the vehicle. It's just something that I made up really quick at home before I left. Uh, it does the trick. It seems strong enough, it's light. The only two things that I don't like about it is that it still takes up a bit of room as far as the length of it. Uh, and the other thing is that it's a little bit flimsy if it's pushed sideways. And actually probably the third thing, not that I've had a problem with this yet, is I don't have it adjustable. So it's just at that set height which so far I haven't had a problem with that, but I might make it adjustable later on, which wouldn't be too hard to do at all. The other option is just a cheap uh, table. This is one meter by 50 centimeters, and it's almost the perfect height as well. I just keep that underneath the mattress here. I can fit two of those. If I'm just going for a short trip, I'll just put the one. If I'm going for a longer, I'll put the two. So with the second table, I can put it on there to make an L, and that works quite well. They're both quite thin, light, and they both tuck under the mattress really easily. So if I'm doing a lot of cooking or I want to be set up for more than just the night, then I'll add the bigger table as well. If not, I can just keep the smaller table. Or alternatively, I've got that other frame there that I can use if I want to leave the tables at home or if I forget to pack them. Just show you the kitchen drawer uh, part of it. And I might just explain why I've done a few things and what I might do differently uh, if I was going to do it a next time or a few of the problems that I've got with it but I had to make a choice either way there was going to be a pro and a con. So straight away at the front here uh, it is lockable which is great and that also slides in really easily. I've made all of it out of 12 mil structural plywood uh, worked out cheap and relatively light. I did look at doing uh, marine ply. It was a lot heavier, better quality, but a lot heavier and a lot more expensive. So this part of the drawer, I kind of wish I had the fridge there instead. So then 
when I pull it out, I'd only have to pull it out a little bit for the fridge and that'd be much easier when trying to load the fridge during shopping. But the reason I went for this, a couple reasons. One, because the fridge can counterweight further back and also for cooking. I wanted to be as far away as possible from the back of the vehicle when cooking. So some of this isn't finished yet um, because I've just used whatever bit of material I had left and I'm going to replace it. For example, this here is just out of some 6 mil. You can see that it's just a bit of scrap left over, wasn't quite the right size. Um, you can see that using the 6, it does bow a little bit. So I'm probably going to use some 9 mil, just make it a bit stronger, or I'll use some 6 mil and build a bit of a frame. So that's there to act as a windbreak mainly and secondly to hold anything in here in place so when i do make this properly i will put in a stay there um, just ten dollar job from bunnings and i'll also put up here uh, a holder for chopping boards so my setup is just a butane burner and i have two of these single ones but I just have one here all the time. Now, I did look at getting the double, but the only thing I don't like about having the double is if I'm only using one, I'm still taking up all that room. Whereas in the past, especially when it's been raining, I can have this here cooking, and then I've got prep space there. And that's quite a decent amount of prep space. Now, if it wasn't too windy, I could put this down here, and cook there. Um, Especially if I was cooking something a bit messy, then it's better off there, then I can wipe the table off easier than what I can wipe up here. But this works out quite well. It sits in there neatly, which is a great spot to put it. And I lost the container years ago, so that worked out quite well. The second one I just keep inside the vehicle, and if I need it, I'll get it out. If not, it can stay there. This is my pan drawer, which I do need to probably fix up a little bit. I sort of made it with the leftover offcuts that I had. Um, part of it that I do like is that I can see in there and that also works as a handle then. Now, unfortunately, at the back I did the same height, not thinking that when I pull it out that it's going to drop. Now, I actually like that it drops, but I need to have it a little bit higher so when it drops it holds, but then I've got better access to things. So in here I've got a camp oven, a couple of uh, billies, saucepan, so I keep the frying pan up there, some cooking equipment, a few bowls, oil, a few little bits here and there. So it fits quite a lot of stuff and I haven't really overpacked it, everything's quite easy to get to. I have thought about putting this on runners, which I might do later. So the deeper drawer fits quite a lot in there. Works out to be a good depth for a variety of things without being too deep to be able to find things. On the other side here, these tend to um, wobble around a bit and sort of fall off their little tracks. So up the top, I've got plates. They were not quite enough room for plates and bowls with the plates and bowls that I've got, but I'm pretty good for space, so I'm not too worried. And I can always fit a few little things there. I've got a fair bit of room at the back. Second drawer, cutlery, fits everything that I need. Uh, I don't think there's much space at the back, but there's a little bit at the front for some other things. The reason I put this one on the bottom, because it was heavier, and when, because I originally had it up the top and it would tend to uh, fall a little bit. This little part here, originally I was going to put a big slide out um, drawer or a door. For the moment I've just got this little plastic sort of, um, I'm not sure if it's for a fridge, but it's just from Kmart, I think it's six dollars. I just use that as a drawer. So I could use that space better, but I'm pretty good for space at the moment. So keeps those sort of things in and I can keep a few butane canisters at the back. One thing that I do like that I've done, up here I have put um, a light, I've got dual USB, which is handy because it's just a good spot to put uh, phones and things when you're charging them, or portable speaker. 
and next to that I've just got a 12 volt socket. I've got a light either side, so this works pretty well for when doing prep and cook. It was only a $15 LED light. I, I like it that it's bright, but at the same time I kind of wish that I had one that was yellow for the bugs. Two switches here, green does the lights both sides. So I've put a light on this side as well because this fridge doesn't come with a light, but by putting that light there, works as a light for the fridge perfectly. The other blue switch is my water pump. So I'll get to that in a moment. So I'm quite new to 12 volt uh, electrical wiring, but even though it looks a little bit messy, so I'm not very happy with how it looks, but it is functional and I haven't had any problems. So I keep down here, there's a little bit of space around the fridge because I wanted some breathable space around the fridge. So it gives me a few compartments to put things. Now this is my hose that I use as a tap. So once again, cheap, effective and simple. So I think this tap was about $3.50, get it from Bunnings or any hardware store. I did look at ones where they're sort of like spring loaded, you can press down, which would be easier for one hand, but I just I thought if that got bumped on anything and started letting water out, that would not be good at all. So I just went for this system, which is fine when you're not holding the camera like I am now. So I've got two ways of using it. I can just gravity feed, which because it's got a little bit of air in the lines at the moment, it's not coming out very well. Or I can turn on the water pump. which when I turn this on, you see there's quite a bit of difference. So the water pump's good for if you just need a bit of pressure to wash off your feet or anything else, or to fill things up quicker, but most of the time I do just use gravity feed. Now, the reason I end up putting a longer bit of hose instead of, I did originally think about putting a tap in, a fixed tap, but I went for a longer bit of hose, then it gives you the ability to uh, fill things up. So if I had a saucepan up here, I could put it straight in. If I wanted to wash my feet or anything down here, I've, I've got that. And then it also just folds up neatly back into this compartment, which once again is much easier when you're holding the camera. So I just have a 20 litre jerry can because really that's enough water for cooking and a little bit of cleaning. And most of the time, I'm only going for a couple days or I'm only a couple days away from getting more water. Also leaves a little bit of room for putting my silicon spray, which I'll explain why I've got that later. WD-40 and a few other little things like rags you can put in there. So at the bottom of the jerry can, I just put a tap into it, which then has an elbow here and follows around the back of the fridge. So at the back of the fridge here, I have my angle plug and I've got a spare 12 volt socket. Also has quite a lot of room here for storing things. I usually store when traveling, like taco kits, cereal, um, anything that's usually in a box form. And I also keep my little coffee table in there. I've got the paper towels, dustpan, and it's actually quite easy to go around and grab things from the other side. So, the hose comes along the back of the fridge and you can see that I've tied it up with the electrical as well. I had to end up putting elbows in every corner just to help the flow of water and it did make it easier to actually install as well. So I ended up going for the cheaper angle. I got it on sale for $719 about a year ago, just because it was so much cheaper than the other angles. And I also like the way that the lid hinges. So that worked out much better than having the lid hinge the other way on most angles. I think it's 38 liter. I haven't had any problems with it. Um, the only things that I'd probably like that it had was a thermometer, digital thermometer, but I'm just using a wireless one which I have in the front of the vehicle to receive 
information. Only other two things, the dial is a bit painful in a way, that it's not digital, but it's just a old fashioned dial. So you really need to know what number does what, um, but it's pretty quick to, to work out. The other thing that would be nice would be to have this uh, wireless control. So while I'm driving, I can change the temperature. So if I've just turned the fridge on and I haven't had it on to 240 the night before, I'd want to crank it up a little bit more and then as I, as the temperature comes down quicker, I can then turn it back to more a fridge setting. Because I really only do use this as a fridge, not a freezer. So I just have some drink bottles in there. They're frozen at the moment because I've got to temp the dial up too much. And then I find it easy to just use containers to grab things. Otherwise, if you just put things in loose, they tend to just fall. I did originally have this plan to have two drawers here, one that was 20 centimeters deep and one that was 30. But the problem I found was that I had some equipment that would not fit in a 20 or 30 centimeter drawer. So I ended up going with one large drawer. So right up the back, I have my solar blanket, which works quite well. At the moment, this is the floor mat, which I use for underneath the swag. But I do tend to keep that in one of the side boxes. Down the bottom, I have my two chairs, but usually I keep them up there because that's the first thing you get out and that also gives you somewhere to put your things that, so it's not on the ground. At the moment, my King's clear top bags are empty, but they fit quite well in here. It's a cooler bag. And then instead of collapsible tubs, because they're one more expensive and two, the problem I find with collapsible tubs uh, that when they're collapsed, you can't really put gear in them. Whereas these, you can. So these were like I don't know, $5 or something like that from Bunnings. So I've got two of them. One stays in here permanently and it fits in there quite nicely. I just keep a few electrical things in there. Lights, uh, a few spare tent pegs, shovel, that sort of stuff. And the other one, which I don't have with me at the moment, I use as a washing tub. So I usually have that in here, or it does also fit here, and then I can just straight down here and there's my washing up, a lot easier. And they're also a little bit sturdier, I can move them with one hand, whereas the collapsible ones flex a little bit. So I end up using Teflon-like slides, I can't remember the actual name of the plastic, HPPE or something like that. 40 mils wide by 5 mils thick, which might be a bit overkill, but they seem to work well, they're strong enough. Uh, I've only got two on both. If I had my time again, maybe I would put a third down the middle of this one. They do work pretty well. They're not as good at, anywhere near as good as a um, roller bearing slide, but they take up less room. And to try and get a roller bearing slide for this length, the cost of that was just ridiculous. I think it was like $500 or something for a pair because it's 1.85 meters long. Whereas this ended up a lot cheaper. I ended up paying, I think about a hundred dollars, but half of that was just in um, freight because I was too far away from any major towns to be able to do that. You do have to, every about maybe three months just put a bit of silicon spray on and then they slide really easily but i'll just show you with one hand how easily they do slide now i've got a reasonable amount of gear still in here there's a little bit of weight and i've had it a lot more weight before but even and this one does need the silicon spray on it but even so it does slide pretty easy just with one hand and locks in the other reason I went for these is because I can lock it. So if I'm leaving the vehicle or I've got some more expensive gear, I can lock it. Even though it wouldn't be that hard to get in and take, break it apart and take things, it still slows people down. If I was not going to put gear in here that I cared about that much, I would have probably just gone for a handle, just a strap handle or a rope handle, which would squish up lot cheaper 
and a little bit easier than these. These, they're not that hard, but they're not the best either. You can't get your whole hand onto them. So I'm lucky that it does slide quite well. At the moment, I've got the mattress in the back. Usually I don't do the mattress in the back for a couple of reasons. One, I prefer to sleep in the swag. Two, it makes it a little bit harder to get to some things in the back with this. Uh, and also because if I'm putting gear in the back, like any boxes or whatever, I prefer to be able to put it straight on the top of the unit rather than on the mattress. And the mattress does just stick out that little bit at the front near the um, seats and at the back. So in the back here, I've got a shelf either side. When I bought the hard top, it already came with that. They are pretty handy to put a few little light things or things that you maybe not use so much. Um, in some ways it would have been better if they were a little bit bigger, but then it digs into the amount of room that you have in the back. When I first had it, I didn't have rubbers on it and we found that you just end up hitting your head, so I had to put some rubbers on it. Um, just because they are quite sharp and it's in a spot that you might um, sit up to, or when you're getting in there. I've got on the back here a strip light. It's Once again, it's only white, which gives off a lot of light, but it's no good for the bugs, so I'll look at replacing that later with a white and yellow, because I feel like I do need a white light a lot of the time, but it's just for a longer period of time, the bugs are just too much. So I used to have just the, on the rear cat flap here, or tailgate, just these um, stays, which would go into the side just there, but when you're inside the vehicle and that is closed, it was too hard to actually sit in here and reach up to push that up and then with your other hand put the stay in. So I ended up getting a gas strut, $17.50 or thereabouts from Bunnings and use the old mounts and just with a bit of um, angle iron. Works really well and it's cheap. So usually I go with the swag for camping. I'm not going to set it up right now, but I'll put the mat down under here and then I'll put the swag over there because I usually find I end up just opening one side of the swag anyway, so the far side can stay closed, this side can be open and that way it protects from the, um, the rain and the wind a little bit. So usually I have the chair sitting in the back and they're the first thing to come out. If we're not doing campfire camping, then we'll just set it up like that. Um, if we are, then they usually go a few metres past the awning to where we have the fire. So in the end, you end up with quite a lot of room. Imagine the swag set up where it is, and there's plenty of room to have multiple people. Uh, there's plenty of prep room. And probably the two things that are, well, three things that I like about this, it's all cheap quick and it's relatively light but I'll just show you what it's like when you're sleeping with the mattress in the back of the vehicle and then I'll take the mattress out because that's how I've got it most of the time with the mattress out and I'll show you the rest of the build and when that is out when this is out the swag actually fits in along that side and it will just tuck under that shelf which keeps it in place as well so there's plenty of room um, especially for us because we're a little bit younger and more mobile so there's plenty of room for us to move around the mattress is comfortable there are two little hatches here which can be used for when driving it sucks air back in um, obviously it's a downside when it rains but um, works well for sleeping in the back too when not moving if there's a little bit of a breeze outside it will capture that and bring it down I will later on put a 12 volt fan in probably a portable one just for those nights when it's quite hot and there's no breeze. So you can see that one there is closed at the moment because I was just by myself, so I just wanted the breeze to come in on the back of my uh, head when I was driving. I've recently put in new window seals, and when I was doing that, I decided to get the windows tinted. I went the darkest I could for the sides and the back, which makes a big difference for heat and privacy because from this side, I can see out quite well. Um, but from the other side, it's quite hard to see in, which is perfect. So now that I've got the mattress out, I'll show you what I've done in the back. Everything's plywood. I've painted it black, 
just to seal the wood in case there's any moisture that gets in also to help it blend in with the um, charcoal marine carpet I've put in um, down the sides because it ends up being quite the void there I've split them into sort of two or four sections just put in these little lift up panels works quite well they're strong enough I was going to put little holes in it, but then that will just let thing, like, things like dirt drop down. And I've just used some brackets here just to hold them up. So I've got two for each one. Fair bit of room in there. So down the passenger side, I've got the recovery kit, some tools, uh, hand winch, some more tools. And there's obviously a lot more room there for things, especially when I'm traveling. I can put things there that I don't use so much but it's still good to have there with you. Up the front here, I've got the dual battery. So 120 amp hour AGM. Now, I don't have it wired up very well at all because I do want to put it um, in the battery compartment that the FFRs have. What I have here is a extension with Andersons on both ends. I just got that from King's, I think it was like $20 or something. So just to get the cabling was more expensive than um, to buy that from King's. At the moment, I just have a strap there just to hold it from moving around. I have a dual battery system, which is a King's one, which sits just there. I think I paid $60 for it. I haven't had any problems with it. It actually works really well, charges really quickly. About 10, 15 minutes of driving, it's pretty well charged. So, using the Anderson plugs, I have one for the fridge. This also does the lights, the water pump, and a couple of those USB and 12 volt sockets, which is plenty. The other one I have here is the inverter. So the inverter is just here on the back of the cubby box, center console. It's only a 350 watt, because I didn't have much money, and it's really just for charging the laptop and a few other things similar to that. So it's, I think it's a Dometic one. I've used it quite a few times when I've gone away and it was just handy being able to charge the, um, the laptop, especially when I have to go away for study. Underneath that, I have the fire extinguisher. Now in the back here, so this is the cab area, there's two sections here, which usually have covers on them. They just pop rivet drill them out and then you get access so even though this wiring's not very neat it does work so there's a little bit of area there because this is on a slope the drawers I was going to make the drawers match it but in the end decided not to and that gave me a space to put my wiring now on the back of the kitchen drawer you should be able to see there that I've got um, my fuse so that slides with the um, drawer. So one of the things I've found, well, I was trying to think of how could I make uh, the drawer have power in it, but and it had to move though as well. So that was something I had to overcome. So I ended up putting the fuse box on the drawer, and then I've got an uh, Anderson plugs, and it has enough room there, so it just coils up in this space when it's. Um, fully closed and when it's um, fully open then it stretches the cord out and it has a little bit of play in it. Works well, haven't had any problems. I was worried about it maybe catching on the drawer. Um, it hasn't done that and I've used this probably about 15 times. On the driver's side, at the front I've got my air compressor. I don't use it very often so it's kept there. It's easy enough still to get. I've got my Max Tracks and I just keep a little bit of gear. things that are easy to reach like the funnel for when I'm filling up the jerry can um, I've got a little hatchet there or a little axe and a bit of other equipment and as you can see there's plenty of room to put lots of things so sometimes because we live in a remote area when we go on a trip we're going to go through a city and we'll do some shopping so it's good to put any things that we buy in here where we don't need it until we get home 
Now also with these brackets, I found it was a good spot to run some wiring. So this wiring here is for the rear light, which is just a King's light as well. Comes in a pair, I think there's three inches. So this is the light that I was talking about. This um, hard top, originally was off a Defender which had a single piece door which meant that it had two holes up here for the hinge so I ended up using them for one for the mounting of the light and the other for the wiring which works out really well haven't really had any dust or water come in since I've put those there the light swivels up or down and I can tr control that from the front which the reason I went for that just control it from the front is because I want to use it mainly as a reversing light when I'm trying to find camp so what would I do differently if I was going to do this again? I'd probably think about putting the fridge further to the front and having more storage area and just do all my cooking on a table space. Um, I think that would make things a lot easier. But I'm still quite happy with how it's set up now and it is justifiable by having this here uh, opposed to there. Uh, the only other thing that I might have done different was instead of putting a jerry can of water there, which I put there as a, um, a counterweight as well, I'd probably just put a 40 litre Camac tank in there because I've measured it up and it fits perfect and run the water that way. And then I could mo maybe move the pantry back a little bit and then I could get a bigger cupboard there instead of this uh, narrow space. So now that the drawer is back in, you can see that the um, fuse box is on the end and that's really easy to get to. So if I blow a fuse, that's really easy. I can just tilt the um, seat forward, the driver's seat forward, and it's right there, easy to access. Plus I can see it um, easy enough too, along with the um, cable that's with it. So if there's any cuts or imperfections or whatever in the um, cable, it's all easy to reach and to see. So having a look around, you can see that most of the camp is set up underneath the awning. Uh, if it's really bad rain, then I can drop some poles and there for it will run the water off. Or I can just get the kitchen out when I need it, and slide it in when I don't, if it's really wet. But it's just really simple and much better than having things in boxes and have to pack, set everything up and then pack it all up. Everything's basically in setup pack up form the whole time. You just open it out, ready to go. It really only takes a few minutes. The longest part's probably the swag. And the swag doesn't take that long to do, even by yourself. So with the awning, I usually will peg it in. It's got the double pegs. It's not that windy at the moment, and because I'm packing up soon, I haven't pegged them in all the way. But usually with the double pegs in, that's enough. But if I know that it's going to be a little bit windy or if it's going to be set up for a couple days, I'll just run a guy rope from here out and or to a tree and it works perfectly. Um, sometimes it's handy having the guy ropes out, you can hang towels, etc. on them. So when I was looking at doing the draw system, I did a fair bit of research and looked at all the different types there are the way that they use their runners and I do think the best ones out there are the drifter ones and I got that's where I got a few ideas from if I went with the drifter drawers for this even though it would be a much better system because they're so good at making their drawers it would have cost about probably four to five thousand dollars now taking away my equipment like the fridge etc all the hardware for building this was about $500, maybe $600. Um, but some of that I could easily cut a bit more again. So I don't have to have the carpet on it. So I could have saved $100 there. Um, with the drawers, they were $60 for the two drawers. I could have made my own and saved some money there as well. The wiring and um, all the electrics, I didn't have to have that. So even though all of this is still relatively cheap for each unit, by the time you add all that up, it works out to be a little bit of money. Um, you're sort of looking at like $10 plus another 20, 30, 35, 65, 
100 plus the wiring so you probably and the fuse box you're probably looking at about 250 just on the electrical side of things the water pump i end up getting i think it's a what called a whale um i think i paid 40 dollars, which is cheaper than a lot of places but i didn't have to do that i could have just gone gravity feed and it would work fine so a lot of this is because i wanted to do certain things um same with this i wanted it to be lockable so these were about 30 40 dollars each if i just went with a bit of rope it would have cost next to nothing so when I was designing this, the main thing that I designed around was the fridge because I wanted the fridge to be in the drawer system because I wanted a flat base on top. So it looked neater, it gave me a flat space if I wanted to sleep on, um, and to put gear. Every now and then I might be, you know, buying things from a hardware store or have some Land Rover parts. It's a bit hard if it, this isn't flat. So I've still got a lot of room there I can use because of that. I also didn't want to put in any drop slide and it just would have got messy uh, to try and put it in there and have to move it in and out. So this works well, it's always here when I need it. We go Because we live remote, we'll go to a regional area to do our shopping at a Coles or Woolies and that way we've got the fridge with us so we can get our cold um, groceries. Downside though with having built around the fridge is that I had to have a minimum height. So it went a little bit higher than what I would have liked because I did used to have another system in and it was a lot lower, which gave a lot of room in the back. You could sit up and you could spend quite a lot of the day in there quite comfortable. Um, but now it's restricted. I'm still happy enough I've got enough room, but I used to have a decent blow up mattress in the back and that was a lot more comfy than this. But now I could not do that with the thickness of it. Trying to, When you're in there asleep, you'd be fine, but just trying to get up to that height and in would be too hard. Something else that I would have liked to have was this down a little bit lower. So that would have restricted the draw height and that's why I had to put it up as high as I did. But I would have liked this down a little bit lower just for cooking it would have made things a bit easier to store a few more things in here. Something that I would have liked to get was a kerosene or a dual fuel uh, cooker. But for now I'm just going with these. I don't want to carry a gas bottle around, so these are cheap, light um, to carry, and they work pretty well. The only really problem is if you get wind blocking the um, flame, but with the way I've got this all set up, I don't really have that problem. It'd have to be a really big wind, because by the time I've got this up here blocking it, I've got a little bit of the actual drawer blocking it, and then I'm cooking on this side, it's pretty well blocked from the wind anyway. So I haven't had any problems with that. It'd have to be blowing a gale for it to actually affect it.